When BMW first launched the 6th generation G11, G12 version of its top saloon, the 7 Series, it elevated itself back into contention at the top end of the boardroom level luxury sedan segment. But much has happened since, hence the need for this significantly revised model. Yes, it makes more of a frontal statement, but equally important are the changes made to the engineering and technology of this car. It's a rejuvenated proposition. The BMW 7 Series has been with us for almost half a century, and it's always been a showcase for the Munich Maker's latest technology. What it's never really had, though, is what a large luxury saloon like this really needs, presence. But that changes right here, right now, with this LCI, Lifecycle Impulse Series, facelifted version of the G11, G12 Series, sixth generation model. What do you think? Makes more of a statement, doesn't it? Now, the 7 Series has long provided the basic engineering for Rolls-Royce models. Now it gets a towering Rolls-Royce-style front grille too. And if, like most of the motoring press, you don't like it, then BMW won't mind too much because 75% of 7 Series production is aimed at markets like China and the US, who demanded this kind of front-end adornment. For too long, BMW's flagship four-door has been merely an enlarged five series. This one aims to stand out. It has to. Of course, the changes made to this Mark VI model weren't only about pavement presence. There's an even more opulent cabin with BMW's latest live cockpit professional screens. And there are new power plants too. BMW has at last found a way of mating plug-in hybrid technology with an engine six cylinders in size and created a 745E variant that can now stretch up to 36 miles from its large capacity lithium-ion battery. Uh, the considerably more powerful 4.4-litre twin-turbo petrol V8 developed for the M5 and the 8-series models also now finds its way into the 7-series and creates a 750i variant, which is now virtually as fast as the V12 M760 Li flagship version. All models feature improved refinement and, as you might expect, even further enhanced infotainment and safety technology. All of which is important because the fundamentals here haven't changed much from the original version of the G11, G12 series model first launched here back in 2015. Perhaps understandably because that was a very complete car with futuristic carbon fibre construction and an adaptive fully air sprung chassis that moulds itself to the road. This was the first 7 Series model in decades to properly prioritise handling dynamics and the result is a small but significant advantage in driver feedback over its arch rivals, the Mercedes S-Class and the Audi A8. In short, this car was already very good, it just needed a little more aesthetic confidence. With that in place in the Trefresh model, launched here in the spring of 2019, might a captain of industry covet one? Well, let's find out. What does BMW do when it comes to developing a 7 Series? Well, potential boardroom sector buyers will expect this car to cost at them, like a rival Mercedes S-Class or Audi A8. Yet, to preserve its brand integrity, the Munich maker has to give this car something that's likely to detract from that, at least an element of handling character. And that's the sort of thing that those competitors don't really have to bother too much about. Previous generation 7 Series models saw the Bavarian engineers uh, rather flounder with this conundrum. Uh, that's despite uh, the turn of the century adoption of Rolls-Royce inspired engineering. But at its launch in 2015, it was clear that this G11, G12 Series 6th generation car addressed this issue rather more successfully. For this design, uh, BMW studied carefully what it was that made a rival S-Class so good over the bumps and sought to emulate it. At the same time, uh, as taking a significant amount of weight out of the body shell thanks to a carbon core structure that was fashioned from a material mix of high strength steels, aluminium and CFRP, carbon fiber reinforced polymer. Then this made possible more agile responses that could be embellished by various handling orientated options. Plus, 
place to keep uh, the potential Audi defectors interested. There was four-wheel drive for those who wanted it. All of this technology, as you'd expect, continues to figure prominently in this revised version of the Mark VI model, uh, a car which claims to deliver extra refinement and fronts up with new V8 petrol and plug-in engine options. Most buyers will continue to opt for the conventional 3-litre six-cylinder derivatives, though, uh, probably the 730D diesel, but possibly the 740i petrol model that we've chosen to try here. Whatever 7 Series variant you've selected, you'll control both the comfort and the dynamically orientated aspects of its character via a system that, in principle, will be familiar to owners of lesser BMWs, the Driving Experience Control Driving Mode Setup, uh, the operating buttons for which are down here by the gear stick for the standard 8-speed Steptronic Sport Automatic Transmission, uh, as well as allowing you to tweak the steering feel, the throttle response and the gear shift timings, uh, the various modes, primarily comfort, eco pro and sport. Also use variable damper control to influence the ride quality that's delivered by the standard two axle air suspension system. Now this setup normally self levels itself. For instance, the ride height is automatically reduced by 10 millimeters in higher speeds in sport mode, uh, but you can also adjust the ride height manually by up to 20 millimeters as you might want to on, say, uh, bumpy surfaces or on steeply angled ramps. If efficiency rather than uh, ride quality is your overriding priority, uh, you'll click into Eco Pro, which activates a coasting function which decouples the engine from the transmission at cruising speeds and which offers various configurable elements for super frugal running. Selecting modes and fiddling with suspension formats, though, isn't something that likely 7 Series owners will want to trouble themselves too often with, so it's just as well that the driving experience control system provides a further setting that's adaptive, which uh, pretty much makes all the decisions for you. Now, with this activated, uh, the vehicle setup is continually adjusted to match driving style, the road surface, and the predictive route data that's flowing from the navigation system. To further perfect the whole package, you'll need to spend a little more on BMW's optional Executive Drive Pro feature, and that's available on all variants bar the plug-in models. Uh, this active chassis control system is aimed at reducing rolling movement at the front and rear axles using automatically adjustable anti-roll bars that give you lots of suspension movement for a great ride in a straight line while springing into action through the bends to compensate for the body roll that you'd otherwise get. Uh, the Executive Drive Pro package also includes what BMW calls an anticipatory chassis control function. This uses a forward-facing stereo camera to read the road ahead for feedback, which is then combined with driving style analysis and uh, GPS data to predictively adapt the suspension for the bumps and gradients that the car is just about to encounter. Now, the only thing similar to this setup that we've tried in this class is the Mercedes optional Magic Ride system, which can't be had on volume versions of this car's arch rival S-Class competitor, which leaves the 7 Series fitted out with Executive Drive Pro Electronics as the car to have in this segment if you really want a contender with all the ingredients for an optimum ride and handling balance. Uh, you might even feel that this BMW now has a slight edge over its Mercedes Ride in terms of refinement. Uh, the Munich maker has certainly aimed for that with this revised model. Uh, they've added in extra sound insulation and they've increased the thickness of the laminated glass to 5.1 millimeters. Uh, we would need a sound meter to make a definitive judgment here, but there really is no doubt that progress in this car really is whisper quiet. Yet, the Munich maker has managed all of this while delivering enough of an engaging driving experience experience to characterize this as a proper BMW. To further improve that, there's another options box to tick, and that's the one for the integral active steering system. Now, this uses a variable steering rack ratio that works as you turn the wheel, moving the rear wheels in either of two ways, depending on how fast you're going. So at parking speeds, uh, the rear wheels will turn in the opposing direction to those at the front for greater maneuverability. If, however, you're going much more quickly at speed through tight turns, then the rear wheels will turn in the same 
same direction as those at the front and that gives you greater stability and agility. Agility is, in this case, a relative term, of course. Uh, this 7 Series model is 17 feet long, after all, and certainly could be difficult to manoeuvre until you get used to it. Uh, without integral active steering fitted, it can't match the turning circle of an S-Class, and it generally feels a touch less manageable than that Mercedes in tight spots. And that means that you'll need to make full use of all the driving aids on offer. Uh, there are plenty of those. Our favourite feature is the way that the standard surround view camera system can be programmed with uh, GPS navigation prompts. So if you have a tight driveway entrance, uh, you can set the dashboard display to show images from around the car every time you arrive there. As before, there's also an optional remote parking feature that can even allow you to park your 7 Series via a clever app while you're standing outside the car. Uh, that is brilliant. And at speed through the bends, well, this 7 Series model may be 125 kilos lighter than an S-Class thanks to its carbon fibre reinforced construction, but it would still be nearly two tonnes in weight if you loaded it up with options. Uh, that being the case, it's admirably nimble when you need it to be, and as we've said, uh, it's far more responsive than an S-Class. As usual, with larger cars from this Munich maker, you get rear-wheel drive as standard and perfectly balanced 50-50 weight distribution. The package is helped in this sixth generation model by the lower centre of gravity that's been achieved by the installation of a lightweight aluminium roof. As a result, only Jaguar's XJ is a more involving driver's tool in this segment, and that's only because BMW has left a trace of vagueness in the steering that even activating sport mode can't quite dial out. There are certainly no issues on the engine front. As suggested earlier, almost all 7 Series sales will centre around the 730D 3.0-litre straight-six diesel, uh, which puts out 265 HP. That's 21 HP less than you'll get from rival Mercedes S350D and Audi A8 uh, 50 TDI models. But the 730D's 620 newton meter torque figure betters both those competitors by 20 newton meters, and that's why this BMW feels so formidably tractable through the mid-range. The sprint to 62 miles an hour is 6.1 seconds away from rest en route to an artificially limited top speed of 155 miles an hour. If you want more, then there's a 320 horsepower 740D diesel uh, that reduces that sprint time to 5.3 seconds and ups torque to 680 newton meters. And that's enough to make mandatory on this variant the fitment of the X-Drive four-wheel drive system that is optional for the 730D customers. Not that we're assuming that you'll automatically want a diesel with this car. Uh, to suit the current zeitgeist, you might well want to consider one of the 3-litre petrol variants, uh, which is why, as mentioned earlier, we're trying a 740i here, a version now offering 340 horsepower. That's enough to dispatch 62 in just 5.5 seconds. But of course, this derivative won't give you diesel-style economy and emissions. Now, so that 7 Series buyers can have the option of a petrol model that does, BMW includes a part-electrified plug-in e-drive derivative in the range. Now, the original version of this uh, G11, G12 Series model offered that too, but mated its electric motor to a little four-cylinder engine, which wasn't very 7 Series-like. With the revised model, uh, badge the 745e, the Munich maker has found a way of making the plug-in formula work with the 740i's uh, 3.6-litre and matched a 113 horsepower electric motor up with a 12 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion battery whose large capacity makes possible an all-electric driving range of up to 36 miles. That's 13 miles more than the old four-cylinder 740e model can manage. The potential all-electric top speed is higher too. It's theoretically possible at up to 87 miles an hour. Uh, with the engine joining in and the drive system's sport mode activated, uh, 62 miles an hour in a 745e is dealt with in just 5.2 seconds. And that's as fast as Mercedes' much more powerful S560 EL plug-in rival. As before, with a 7 Series plug-in, buyers get the choice of either a short wheelbase rear-driven variant or a long wheelbase X-Drive model. 
For completion, we also need to tell you about the minority interest X-Drive petrol performance models. Now, the first of these, uh, the short wheelbase only 750i, gets a completely new 4.4 litre twin turbo V8 uh, that BMW developed for the latest M5 and 8 series coupe models. Hence, an upgraded 530 horsepower output that's a substantial 79 horsepower up on the uh, directly comparable variant in the pre-facelifted range. That, of course, makes it impressively quick. Rest to 62 occupies four seconds dead. Now that is only a couple of tenths off the sprint time of the M760 IL, the V12 6.6 litre flagship version. And that's parity explained partly by the top 585 horsepower V12 variants need to cart around the extra weight of the long wheelbase body style. All of the 7 Series model rest of 62 miles an hour sprint times that we've quoted are aided by a standard launch control system that aims to get you off the line Alonso style or out of harm's way should your executive cavalcade uh, be ambushed by kidnappers. Delete as appropriate. According to BMW, 7 Series buyers wanted more novelty, differentiation from 3 and 5 Series models, and a proper sense of presence, perhaps even something of a Rolls-Royce vibe. Well, they certainly got that here, courtesy of the same huge stately front grille that you'll find on an X7. Now, apparently, Asian and American buyers love this, and for the Munich maker, that's all that really matters. Now this frontal appendage is half as big again as the previous grille and it's pushed up the bonnet and wing line by 50 millimetres. Although rather curiously, apparently not to the detriment of aerodynamics, which are actually claimed to be slightly sleeker. Now the other key front end changes include slimmer Icon adaptive LED headlights. And now these are optionally available in the piercing laser light guys that we have here, in which form their high beam range is doubled. And these upright front wing vents which open and close to manage air pressure in the wheel arches. As with rival models and most previous 7 Series designs, there are two saloon body styles, both of which gained 22 millimetres of length as a result of the changes made to this revised model. Uh, choose between this short wheelbase version and a long wheelbase derivative, which is lengthened by 140 millimetres for extra rear passenger space. As ever with a luxury BMW, you'd know the brand without the badges. Both variants display the uh, Munich maker's familiar proportions and are characterised by a long bonnet, short front overhangs, a flowing roof line and the usual Hofmeister kink. That's that upturned line at the trailing edge of the side window graphic. As for changes made, well, the door mirror stalks are narrower and creases in the bodywork are a bit sharper to help take some of the bulk out of what is still a rather conservative shape. More noticeably, this air breather behind the front wheel arch is now tall and vertical, uh, forming the starting point for a trimming strip which rises above the side skirts and now runs behind the back wheel arch into the rear apron. The wheel rims range from 18 to 20 inches, and we have the largest size here in this star spoke by color design. Changes feature at the rear too with three dimensional LED tail lamps that are around 35 millimeters slimmer than those of the previous model. As before, a chrome bar connects them, but it's now embellished by this slim light strip, emphasizing the fact that at nearly two meters in width, this is one of the widest cars in the class. Uh, further down, the exhaust system's tailpipes are edged in wider chrome surrounds and they are integrated flush into the lower section of the rear apron. Of course, as usual, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see. In this case, what BMW calls this car's carbon core. Now, this references the way that long fillets of CFRP, carbon fibre reinforced polymer, have been bonded into this model's aluminium and steel structure, allowing the development team to be able to reduce the gauge of metalwork used while still making the whole design more rigid. This, along with a lightweight aluminium suspension design, makes a big difference on the scales. Uh, this sixth generation 7 Series weighs in at around 125 kilos less than a comparable Mercedes S-Class. 
Time to take a look inside. Now with the right option box ticked, it's actually possible to unlock this long door with an Android smartphone, negating the need for any kind of key. As you might be, we're deeply suspicious of that kind of technology, although the Munich maker does boast about how difficult the incorporated NFC chip is to hack. But in any case, we think it's much nicer to use the classy provided display key, which incorporates uh, a tiny integrated touch screen. This allows all kinds of remote functionality. So, for instance, you can see if you've locked the car, you can check how much fuel remains, and you can even pre-warm or pre-cool the cabin before you get in. Pay more for the remote control parking system, and via this fob, you can even maneuver your 7 Series into a tight space while you're standing on the pavement. As the soft closed door clicks into place, you settle yourself behind the wheel in a cabin with a design approach that seems a little more understated than it is outside and feels satisfyingly opulent. Uh, there's not a single piece of black plastic to be seen. Extensive use instead made of buttery smooth Nappa leather with exquisite partly quilted upholstery and dash top stitching. Uh, for this revised model, the designers have added in extra matte chrome and piano black finishing for much of the switch gear. Plus there are some lovely high gloss fine line wooden inlays. If all that's not exclusive enough, then some of the freshly added optional finishes can deliver a real Rolls-Royce vibe. Uh, there's pleated parquet-style leather or a really lavish upholstery option that adds plaited leather rope down the seat seams. Uh, without extras like these, you might too easily be reminded that there is perhaps more of a similarity to lesser BMW models than some well-heeled owners might want, but the design of the layout is difficult to fault. It's set off by silver finishing and lovely colour-selectable ambient lighting strips that uh, illuminate to create a really classy feel after dark. Plus, there's a smart touchscreen surface for the control panel of the four-zone automatic air conditioning system. As you'd expect, you're comfortably cosseted by electrically adjustable heated comfort seats, which perfectly position you in front of the three-spoke wheel. Through it, you view the most significant cabin change made to this updated model, uh, the addition of BMW's live cockpit professional package. Now that delivers the first fully digital instrument cluster display that we've seen on a 7 Series, a 12.3-inch layout uh, that combines with a centre dash monitor, uh, which is uh, the same size as before, that's 10.25 inches, but which is now operable using more sophisticated graphics and software. Now, all of this functionality is accessible via a touchscreen, via the usual lower iDrive touch controller, via steering wheel buttons, uh, using your voice, and even via gesture control, which, as on other BMW models, is frustrating to try to master. Still, the Munich maker has matched, and in some cases exceeded, the current media connectivity class standard here. A sidebar menu on the central screen gives you media, communication, navigation, car and apps options that connect you into features like the Harman Kardon DAB audio system, 4G LTE connectivity, connected sat-nav, a Wi-Fi hotspot, and a 320 gigabyte hard drive. All of that is standard fare, as is a concierge service that connects you through to an operator to help with journeying information, and a wide range of BMW vehicle apps that give you access to things like news reports and weather forecasts. Plus, the system can remotely update its own software too. Do bear in mind, though, that uh, some of the digital services on offer come included only for three years, and some of them, like Online Connected Music and Microsoft Office 365, which syncs in your emails and your calendar for just three months. After that, you have to pay. To some extent, you can't help feeling that it's a case of the Munich maker giving with one hand and taking away with the other. There are other issues too. Uh, we'll continue to bemoan the fact that BMW still hasn't properly got on board with smartphone mirroring. You only get Apple CarPlay as standard for the first year and Android Auto functionality, well, that's not offered at all. Uh, that's simply not acceptable in such an expensive car. 
Not everyone likes the functionality of this instrument binnacle screen either. Uh, the virtual speedometer and rev counter gauges, uh, which symmetrically frame the display, use opposite swinging needles that can be visually a bit confusing. And although you get sat-nav mapping in the uh, center of that screen, you can't then expand the 3D navigation layout to completely fit it, as is possible with, say, Audi's virtual cockpit layout. On the plus side, though, there is absolutely no doubt that the whole instrument display and iDrive infotainment monitor combination is much easier and safer to use than the twin control screens and the haptic feedback consoles that you get in the latest Audi and Range Rover models. BMW, we think, also has a slightly better handle on voice control than its rivals. Uh, this advanced entertainment package includes what the brand calls an intelligent personal assistant. Now, this is supposed to be a fount of all knowledge that uh, responds to voiced questions prefaced by Hey BMW, much as would the Alexa system, uh, Siri on an Apple phone, or the Google Assistant feature on an Android handset. BMW insists that this setup is rather cleverer than those ones. Uh, you can give it a name if you think it'll help you to bond with it better. And the press kit tells us that we can even ask it the meaning of life. It is more likely, of course, that you'll be using it to make day-to-day -day driving just a little bit easier. If you tell it you're cold, it'll turn up the temperature. If you don't understand a particular feature, then it will trot out explanatory text from the online handbook. Or you might want it to check your oil level, uh, look for fuel stations along your route, or read out your messages to you. Enough though with connectivity, what else do you need to know here? Well, perhaps that BMW seems to have a better handle than most makers on which functions are needed on the dash and which can live within on-screen menus. And the brand's standard comfort spec seats are superbly supportive. Uh, they incorporate lumbar adjustment that can be moved up and down as well as in and out. Uh, in addition, there are a range of little touches that make a lot of difference, uh, like the way that the temperature readouts are shown on small screens on the climate control panel rather than being hidden away in monitor menus. Uh, we also approve of the light strips on the doors that illuminated a pulsing red when they're opened to act as a warning to other road users, although you'll only actually notice that at night. Plus, we also like the optional head-up display, which projects in large-scale 3D and which shows more information than systems of this sort normally do. There's even a selectable caring car feature on the center infotainment screen that uses music and the climate control in a three minute long session that will either vitalize or relax you. And there are also three further experience modes that allow you in BMW's words, to dip into different atmospheric worlds via executive, expressive, and well-being modes that in this case combine climate control modes with special ambient lighting and seat heating settings. Yes, these kinds of things are gimmicks, and yes, you will be pleased to have them after the kind of long day at the office that made it possible for you to run a new 7 Series in the first place. When it comes to cabin practicality, BMW achieves the required class standard, but no more. Uh, the door bins are averagely sized, as is the glove box, which includes a pen clip. Uh, plus, an overhead uh, storage compartment for your sunglasses is missing. Still, we do like what there is. Uh, the stowage area at the bottom of the center stack is accessed via this beautifully damped lid that slides back to reveal uh, silver-framed twin cup holders and an area beyond that that incorporates a wireless charging mat. And you get this leather-topped twin-lidded storage box between the seats that incorporates a USB port and a 12-volt socket. You also get a flock line cubby down by the driver's right knee here and ticket clips up on the sun visors. Time to move rearwards and experience the part of the 7 Series on which the designers have lavished considerable care, which is just as well because this will be the most important area of the car for many potential buyers. Here, as mentioned earlier, we've gone for the short wheelbase model, but even so, standards of legroom are still generous, and they almost exactly match those of the class standard setting Mercedes S-Class. Plus, you'll enjoy around 30 millimeters more headroom than that car can offer before you recline your neck into these lovely stitched headrests. 
Uh, classy touch is provided by smart upper trimming uh, for the front seat backs here. There's also lovely stitching on the doors. Uh, these incorporate pull-out ashtrays. You might have thought, though, that there was a reduced need for those in this day and age. Uh, anyway, as you'd expect, overhead reading lights and uh, seat back pockets feature too. A stack of centre features sit above the high transmission tunnel, including twin vents and the four zone climate systems controls for the rear cabin. Uh, below these is a little compartment just above a little flap that springs back to reveal twin USB ports and a 12 volt socket. In this case, as you can see, we've got a conventional rear bench, a seat very much tailored for two, a third adult was set uh, somewhat uncomfortably on this raised centre section. Heated upholstery is standard and you can also on request add in seat massaging functionality. Rear window sun blinds, they would also be nice to have. Uh, if you've gone for the long wheelbase body shape, then you might also want to look at rear seat ventilation and that's specifying the panoramic sky lounge glass roof, which includes 15,000 graphic patterns that generate an adaptable ceiling display that's reminiscent of a starlit sky. A likely business buyer wanting to be chauffeured around would probably want BMW's optional rear seat entertainment experience system which includes a Blu-ray player and gives you a couple of 10.2 inch screens uh, which have HD and touchscreen functionality and they allow rear passengers to access the entertainment, navigation and online functions of the vehicle. Now these are controlled via a BMW Touch Command tablet which is integrated into the central armrest and that's a removable 7 inch iPad style screen that can be used anywhere in the car or even outside of it. Now this also can operate things like seat adjustment, interior lighting and climate control. Now all of that would go perfectly with the optional executive lounge rear console and the optional executive lounge seating package. Now with this you'll be able to recline the rear backrest right back to 42.5 degrees, slide the front passenger seat and backrest right forward out of your way and activate an electrically operated rear fold out footrest. Plus, that package automatically adjusts the rear seat entertainment screens to suit the angle of your seat. On to luggage space. Uh, the boot lid is electrically activated, of course, thanks to the standard comfort access package. You can raise it with a swipe of your foot beneath the bumper if key and pocket you're approaching this BMW heavily laden down with bags. It rises to reveal a 515 litre boot that's a fraction larger than that of a rival Mercedes S-Class and 10 litres bigger than the trunk that you'll find in a competing Audi A8. There's no extra space uh, beneath the floor, but you get a small recessed open cubby to the right and a covered compartment for the first aid kit on the left. Uh, four tie-down hooks feature. Bag hooks, uh, there's one on the left, uh, but there's no 12-volt socket. Plus, there is this impractically shiny boot lid strip that'll uh, quickly scratch as you heave heavier items over it. It's a pity that there's no option to extend the trunk space on offer with retractable seat backs. After all, even 7 Series owners visit IKEA sometimes. All that's offered is this optional through-loading ski hatch. Uh, bear in mind too that if you opt for the 745E PHEV hybrid model, boot space will fall to just 420 litres. Seven series pricing sits mainly in the 70 to 90,000 pound bracket with the vast majority of customers likely to opt for one of the four mainstream six cylinder models. If budget limits you to a figure at around the 70,000 pound price point, then you'll have two options. Uh, your probable preference will be for the 730D diesel, which accounts for the vast majority of sales. It offers 265 horsepower and it can be had with a standard wheelbase or for 4,000 pounds more in long wheelbase form. Stay with the standard wheelbase and you'll be offered the option of X-Drive four-wheel drive for another £2,700. Alternatively, if you don't like diesel, then the base petrol-powered 740i we're trying here sells at a premium of around £2,300 over the base diesel and comes in rear-driven form only. Now, we've got the standard wheelbase model here, but as with the 730d, a 740i customer can pay £4,000 more for a long wheelbase version.
Now, if you or more likely your company can fund asking figures starting from around £77,000, there are two further six-cylinder options. Uh, diesel folk are offered standard or long wheelbase versions of the 740D, which puts out 320 horsepower and only comes in X-Drive form. But perhaps a better choice for the same kind of money is the petrol-electric 745E plug-in hybrid, which has 286 horsepower and can go up to 36 miles on all-electric propulsion. Now, you can have your 745 E, either in rear-driven standard wheelbase form or for just under £6,750 more in X-Drive long wheelbase guys. Now all these core 7 Series models come either with base trim or for £4,000 more in the more dynamic looking M Sport spec that the majority of buyers prefer, which is what we've got here today. Uh, lots to consider then. Ultimately though, whatever your 6-cylinder 7 Series preference, petrol or diesel, standard shape or long wheelbase, uh, rear-drive or X-Drive, base trim or M Sport budget for a spend in the 70 to 80,000 pound bracket and you won't go too far wrong. For completion, we'll also mention the two other high output minority interest petrol models, both offered only in X Drive form. Uh, there's a V8 powered 750i, which puts out 530 horsepower, comes only with a standard body shape, and costs from around £84,000 or around £88,000 if you want M Sport trim. Or if you're a real captain of industry and your company car budget is far less restricted, uh, you could opt for the single spec flagship variant, that's the M760 Li, which which uses a 585 horsepower V12, only comes in long wheelbase form and costs close to £140,000. Sales of both those top two derivatives in our market will be vanishingly small though. So that's guided you through the 7 Series lineup, but how is this model positioned within the wider BMW range? Well, these days there are, after all, plenty of other large segment luxury sector offerings from the Munich Maker, which use much the same technology in play here. If you don't mind trading a little rear seat and luggage space for a little extra exterior elegance, then there's the brand's 8 Series Grand Coupe, which costs around £3,000 less, or if you like the idea of more rear seat and package room and you fancy an SUV, then there's the enormous X7, which costs around £2,500 more than a 7 Series and comes with three seating rows. For rear seat luxury, though, we think nothing else will satisfy you quite like a 7. Nothing else in a BMW showroom anyway. Down the road at Mercedes, though, lies this car's nemesis, the Mercedes S-Class, the model that, more than any other, this 7 Series has to beat. On paper, this BMW's cause is helped by its option of X-Drive four-wheel drive, British versions of the Merc are rear-driven only, and by lower CO2 readings that'll make a 7 cheaper to tax. Plus, the 7 Series offers an apparent price advantage over its arch-rival, which, at first glance, appears to pitch the 730D and 740D diesel derivatives around £5,000 below their direct S-Class equivalents. Uh, the difference between a 740i petrol variant and the base petrol S-Class, the S450, is even greater, around £10,000, although in this form the Merc can offer a bit more power. Now we might also point out that the plug-in version of the S-Class, the S560 EL, is around £14,000 more than an equivalent long wheelbase 745e. Partly, but not completely explaining all these price discrepancies, is the fact that the entry-level spec of an S-Class AMG line offers much of the more dynamic-looking feel that you'd have to pay £4,000 more to get with an M Sport trimmed version of this BMW. The other really credible contender in this segment is Audi's A8, now rejuvenated in fourth generation form. A base petrol A855 TFSI costs about the same as an equivalent 740i, but the base diesel 50 TDI version of that Audi costs around £2,500 more than the directly equivalent 730d. We think that BMW will eke out an advantage over that rival Ingolstadt model in the eyes of many potential buyers, though, thanks to its slightly cleaner emissions, its slightly bigger boot, and its slightly more imposing looks. 
Other options in this segment tend to be specific competitors to individual 7 Series models. Uh, let's start with someone considering the 730D diesel and unimpressed by the Mercedes S350D and Audi 50TDI direct alternatives. Well, there's always the Jaguar XJ, which in 3-litre V6 diesel, 300 PS form, could actually save you up to around £6,500, but it's an old design with a smaller boot. If, on the other hand, you have your eye on the BMW in 745e plug-in hybrid form, you might be interested to know that the same kind of cash could buy you a full electric segment alternative in the form of the long-range version of Tesla's Model S. There are some interesting alternatives to the conventional petrol 740i variant 2. Uh, one, the rare Lexus LS500h self-charging hybrid prioritizes running cost efficiency over handling dynamics. Uh, the other, the Porsche Panamera 4, goes in the opposite direction and throws in four-wheel drive and a rear hatch. But neither is quite as complete a package as this BMW. Now, you could say the same about Maserati's Quattro Porte, uh, which is a more exotic choice than a 7 series and offers alternatives to uh, base petrol and diesel versions but that Maserati isn't a particularly sensible choice in terms of uh, either interior space or running costs and it'll cost you around £5,000 more to buy. Of course, your options would widen further if you were prepared to consider a large luxury SUV as an alternative to this car. Uh, but then for parity, you'd really be looking at BMW models like the X5, the X6 or the X7. Anyway, enough with the competitor choices. Let's assume that having considered all those, you've decided that it is a 7 Series that you really want. If that's the case, uh, then you'll be wanting to know exactly how generous BMW has been when it comes to the standard equipment. So let's see. Across the range, all models get 7 Series staple features like the unique BMW display key with its LCD display via which you can get full vehicle status information. And as with the brand's other models, you get a driving experience control system that allows you to set the car up to suit the way that you want to drive. Although here as well as the usual comfort, sport and eco pro modes, uh, there is an extra adaptive setting that basically makes all the choices for you. Uh, all the modes influence throttle response, uh, the change times of the standard 8-speed sport automatic transmission, and also the feel of the standard two-axle air suspension system with its variable damper control. We also really like the standard Parking Assistant Plus package, which gives you all-round park distance control sensors, a rear view camera, and a surround view camera system, plus also functionality that can take care of the acceleration, the braking, the steering and gear changes necessary to manoeuvre into a space. Now in addition, uh, this package also incorporates a clever reversing assistant. Now this will remember the steering movements that you made during the vehicle's last forward manoeuvre and it will replicate them when you're moving backwards. So, for example, uh, it will take over when you're reversing out of a parking position that you drove into the previous night, or it can control the car if you have to reverse backwards for up to 50 yards. It's really clever. Beyond all that, the 7 Series kit list is appropriately extensive, with even base trim delivering quite a lot. Uh, to be specific, you get things like 18-inch light alloy multi-spoke wheels and Icon adaptive LED headlights featuring a high beam assistant, which automatically dips them at night. Also included are auto headlamps and wipers, LED technology for the tail lights and the front fog lamps, potent looking quadrilateral tailpipes and soft closed doors that shut themselves if you don't slam them properly. And you get power folding anti-dazzle exterior mirrors, an alarm and a climate comfort windscreen which uses a layer of special reflective material to reflect certain wavelengths of sunlight. Talking of climate control, the standard four-zone system is an integral part of selectable caring car and experience mode settings that you can activate from the center dash screen to calm you with things like special cabin lighting and calming audio at the end of a taxing day. Uh, refreshingly, metallic paint is standard too, although some of the available shades can only be had with M Sport or full M variants. Uh, this test car's carbon black finish, for example. Also standard is BMW's Comfort Access Package that provides not only keyless entry but also remote powered closing of the boot lid that can be activated with a wave of your foot beneath the bumper. 
Comfort access additionally allows you to open this BMW with an Android phone. Uh, the unlocking function works with an NFC chip, which the brand says is harder to hack than the standard key. Uh, plus, you can send locking and startup access uh, for your 7 Series to up to four friends. And because their BMW profile can be stored as part of the brand's so-called open mobility cloud, your 7 Series model will automatically set itself up to those people's preferred driving settings when they use your car. Uh, what about interior features? Well, you get superbly supportive heated and electrically adjustable comfort seats trimmed in high quality exclusive Nappa leather. And there's also four zone climate control, ambient lighting with six color themes, cruise control with a brake function, heated rear seats, fine line wood finishing and a wireless charging mat. Uh, there is also what the brand calls a welcome light carpet, which uses LEDs in the car's side skirts to bathe its perimeter in runway style approach lighting after dark, which will guide you into the cabin. Uh, once you are seated through the sport leather steering wheel, you'll view a leather trimmed binnacle that houses a really key part of the standard live cockpit professional package. That's the 12.3 inch virtual instrument cluster display. Now this uh, combines with a 10.25 inch center dash screen and it provides uh, infotainment functionality which can be accessed via touchscreen, via an iDrive touch controller, by steering wheel buttons or even by gesture control. Uh, there's voice control too, and not just any voice control system. BMW has developed something called an intelligent personal assistant, which works a bit like the Siri or Google Assistant systems that you might use on your phone. And that's there to answer questions that you can voice to the car as you drive it. Uh, now, through both the main cabin screens, you can access the standard Harman Kardon DAB audio system and also the connected navigation setup. Now, that can make proactive route suggestions as you drive. Plus there's the latest 4G LTE connectivity, Wi-Fi hotspot preparation, a 320 gigabyte hard drive and Bluetooth phone pairing too, which reminds us that BMW has at last included Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring on this model, although annoyingly it's only free for the first year. Access to the Android Auto system, that's still missing. As you'd want in this flagship BMW model, there are plenty of the brand's really clever digital connectivity features too, including the full suite of BMW connected drive services. Uh, things like teleservices, which can decide when a garage visit is required and automatically book it, and real-time traffic information, which warns you of congestion along your chosen route. Plus, there's also the company's suite of BMW vehicle apps, which give you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts, for up to four days ahead and information on highway tolls. In addition, the system can remotely update itself with fresh features and it can uh, also add mapping upgrades. And of course, it will read out your text messages to you. 7 Series buyers also get a standard concierge service, which at the press of a button will give you direct access to an operator who will be able to answer almost any question about your journey as you drive it. Another feature you might like is the parking space assistant. Drawing from the navigation destination you've given the car, this will brief you well ahead of your arrival on the various parking options that will be available where you're going, uh, using an on-street parking information feature to tell you where the nearest multi-story car park is and telling you which nearby streets to your destination might offer parking spots. It is all very clever. What you need to bear in mind though is that some of these connected drive services are time limited before becoming chargeable. Now that's certainly the case with the connected teaser package which gives you the Microsoft Office 365 feature which syncs in your emails and your calendar. That's only free for the first three months of ownership. Uh, the same is also true of the Munich Makers online connected music system. Now that will give you access to the uh, Deezer and Napster 
premium streaming services. Now with this, uh, you can open an account for unlimited music access, and then you can listen to all your favorite songs, or indeed, you can download them onto your 7 Series Models Incorporated Infotainment System hard disk. Uh, you get a bit longer, three years, to play with the brand's remote services package. Now that will allow you to control uh, many aspects of your car's operation via your smartphone. And if you've owned uh, another new BMW in the recent past, then you'll maybe also recognize the downloadable BMW Connected Plus app. Now this can learn your mobility routines, it can read your calendar, and it'll even prompt you when to leave for scheduled journeys. It'll also get familiar with your most frequently traveled routes and it'll memorize them as future destinations. Plus, the app can also help you to find your car if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it and it can remotely lock or unlock the doors. All of this is included even with base 7 Series trim, and if you pay the extra for the long wheelbase body shape, then you'll get an electric glass sunroof, which would normally be optional, and a roller sun blind for the rear window to help shelter you from the paparazzi. Uh, getting that lengthier model also gives you the chance to pay extra for a feature that you can't have with the standard wheelbase design, BMW's Sky Lounge two-part panoramic glass roof, which includes 15,000 graphic patterns, which generate an adaptable ceiling display that's reminiscent of a starlit sky. Now, so far, we've been talking about base trim 7 Series models. Here, though, we've opted for the sportier feel of M Sport trim, and that's available with both body styles. This adds an M aerodynamics package, high gloss shadow line exterior finishing, and 19 inch bicolor M double spoke wheels or 20 inch rims if you've gone for the 750i uh, shod with run flat tires. Inside, all M Sport models feature the thicker M Sport leather steering wheel that BMW buyers seem to like so much, plus fine line black wood trim and an anthracite headliner. But of course, all this will usually only represent a starting point for most likely 7 Series buyers. Customers in this segment are routinely used to spending five-figure sums on options, and BMW will happily oblige them in that quest here. By the way, virtually all the optional features that we're going to talk about here will come as standard on the flagship M760iL variant, as you'd expect, given that it costs twice as much as an entry-level model. Uh, features like the one that we think you're really going to want to pay extra for if you're going to be driving this car yourself, the Executive Drive Pro system. Now here, a windscreen-mounted stereo camera detects uneven surfaces and it preconditions the suspension accordingly for a magic carpet-style ride. Now that's delivered while an included dynamic drive setup uses active front and rear anti-roll bars to reduce body Body roll. Now, if you're interested in the Executive Drive Pro package, then we think that you'll probably also want to be looking at the uh, Integral Active Steering option, which offers variable ratio power steering and rear axle steering, which turns the rear wheels in either the same or the opposite direction to the front wheels, and that depends on how fast you're going. At low speeds, for example, that gives you a tighter turning circle, while at higher ones, it uh, contributes towards greater cornering stability. Whilst you're ticking boxes, you might also like to look at the visibility package that we've got here, which upgrades the headlamps to the brand's more powerful laser light status with its unique X design and adds into them a vast forward range of up to 600 meters. If you're interested in drive technology features like that, then your dealer will also point you towards the optional technology package. Now, as well as uh, BMW's full suite of driving assistant professional camera driven safety features. Now we're going to uh, go through those for you when we talk about safety in just a few minutes. This pack also gives you a head up display, a drive recorder dash cam setup and the remote control parking system which rather coolly allows you to park your 7 series model standing outside it using a smartphone. That last feature, by the way, can't be had on the 745e, and on all variants, the drive recorder dash cam setup can be ordered separately. Across the range, many customers also tend to want the optional premium package, which gives you massaging and cooled ventilation for the front seats, and an ambient air package that infuses the interior with eight individually selectable scents. 
A likely business buyer wanting to be chauffeured around would probably want one of the optional rear seat packages. Uh, the rear seat comfort package gives you a more sumptuous set of comfort spec rear seats with heated armrests and lovely enveloping headrests. Uh, there is also a massaging function. Now that includes a so-called vitality program and that's been specially developed to allow passengers to engage in what BMW calls active training on longer journeys. Uh, the pack gives you heated armrests in the front too and it gives you BMW's rear seat entertainment experience system which includes a Blu-ray player and it gives you a couple of 10.2 inch HD touchscreens. Now those have touchscreen functionality and they allow rear passengers to access the entertainment, navigation and online functions of the vehicle. Now these are controlled via the BMW Touch Command tablet which is integrated into the central armrest. A removable 7 inch iPad style screen which can be used anywhere in the car or even outside of it. This also can be ordered separately and it additionally operates things like seat adjustment, interior lighting and climate control. If you want to go further with rear seat opulence, the even more extravagant rear seat comfort plus package gives you everything I just mentioned along with a few features that you can also order separately. Uh, powered rear sun blinds, cooled rear upholstery and a fixed rear center console which incorporates cup holders and a fold out table. Most importantly, Rear Seat Comfort Plus uh, delivers something that the captains of industry will really want, what BMW calls its executive lounge seating arrangement. Now this adds uh, cooled ventilation for the rear seat upholstery, deep pile floor mats and lots of electrically powered functionality. Uh, you'll be able to recline the rear backrest right back to 42.5 degrees, slide the front passenger seat and backrest right forward out of your way and activate an electrically operated rear fold-out footrest. Plus the package automatically adjusts the rear seat entertainment screens to suit the angle of your seat. Whether you'll be driving this car or being driven around in it, you're probably going to want to look at upgrading the audio system. And you might not think there's much wrong with the standard nine channel Harman Kardon setup until that is, you listen to the optional alternative. That's a thumping 20 speaker, 1500 watt, 20 channel Bowers and Wilkins diamond surround sound system. Uh, other optional features, they're really down to personal preference. Uh, you might want to look at sun protection glass and at steering wheel heating. And probably we should also mention a few practicalities, uh, things like the through loading system ski hatch that you'll need for the transport of longer items, uh, the fitted luggage compartment mat and the leather case that BMW can provide to protect that display key. Plus, possibly also the BMW roof system with its rails for carrying roof boxes and attachments for skis, for snowboards and bikes. Uh, you can, of course, add in a tow bar too, and that is of the electrically folding variety, of course. On to aesthetics. Uh, now, if you're one of those 7 Series buyers who couldn't resist the allure of M Sport trim, then your dealer will prevail on you to pay more for the M Sport Plus package, which gives you larger 20-inch star-spoke bicolor light alloy wheels, sun protection glazing, M seat belts, an M rear spoiler, and the M Sport braking system. On a 750i, that pack gets you an M Sport exhaust system too. What else? Well, metallic paint, as we said earlier, is standard, but if you're really determined to pay BMW more for your choice of paint color, four more unique BMW individual metallic finishes, Armandine Brown, Aventurine Red, Azurite Black, and Tanzanite Blue are available for an extra 1,000 pounds. Uh, you can add in high gloss shadow line exterior trim if you have chosen a base spec model that doesn't have it or you can add in extended high gloss shadow line trimming if you have an M Sport variant that does have it already. Plus there are various different 19 and 20 inch wheel choices if you don't like the ones that are provided with your chosen trim level. As for the inside, well, if money really is no object, you can replace the standard exclusive Nappa leather trim with BMW individual full Merino leather, which is offered with a choice of five colors, black, beige, red, white, and a shade BMW calls Amarone. If you want more unique interior inlays, you can pay extra for either 
dark finewood American oak with metal flex, high gloss gray poplar grain finewood, or as here, inlays in shiny piano black. What else? Uh, well, you could have an Alcantara headliner in anthracite or BMW individual form. Base trim models can be had with BMW individual door sill finishes and M Sport variants can be fitted with subtly striped M seat belts. Uh, on to safety. Now, BMW points out that the stiffer carbon fiber reinforced plastic used in this car's bodywork construction creates a safer passenger cell. Inside it, occupants are protected by all the usual things, front and side airbags, head and curtain airbags for both front and rear seats, and active head restraints that prevent whiplash. Uh, there is also a standard dynamic safety system that will automatically pre-tension the seat belts, uh, close the windows and the sunroof, and position the driver's seat in the optimum safety position if an accident situation is imminent. On top of that, you get Isofix charge seat fastenings and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability. Plus, there's hill start assist to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. There's plenty of braking peace of mind too with the ABS system supplemented by faded compensation, CBC, cornering brake control and the neat brake drying system that helps to keep the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Panic stops, well they're aided by a brake assist system and they're advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that flash a bright warning. You also get a multi-collision braking function that in the event of an impact will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. Uh, tire pressure monitoring, that's standard too. Another neat safety feature fitted as standard across the range is the attentiveness assistant that monitors you for signs of drowsiness. Uh, that intelligent personal assistant voice system can help here too. If you were to say, hey BMW, I'm tired, it would trigger a program that would adjust the lighting mood, the cabin temperature and the music to try to make you feel more awake and alert. Now we'll also highlight the standard BMW emergency call with teleservices system which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. Now this system not only gives them your exact GPS location but it also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, uh, how hard the seat belts were pulled, uh, how many airbags burst and so on. If you were to have a crash it would all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were but also that they would arrive on the scene more prepared and ready to get you to safety than they could ever otherwise be and that's a potentially life-saving difference. Now in recent times uh, this whole setup has been further improved to also automatically activate after low speed collisions which are below the threshold for airbag deployment immediately after the impact flashing up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistance service directly. It's all well and good, but if we're honest, we'd expect it a bit more. The kind of level three autonomous driving technology that you'd find on a rival Audi A8 is noticeable by its absence. As for camera-driven safety kit, well, a whole suite of intelligent safety features are available, but on most models, these cost extra. Uh, let's take autonomous braking, the kind of setup that uh, scans the road ahead as you drive for potential accident hazards and which can help you slow the car to avoid or prevent an accident. That's the kind of thing that you'd find on some super minis these days, but it's only optional on most 7 Series variants. The city collision mitigation and forward collision warning features in question are supplied as part of a driving assistant professional pack that, as mentioned earlier, is only available as part of a pricey optional technology package. The Driving Assistant Professional Pack also includes two other electronic safety features that we would have expected uh, would have been fitted without question across the range, namely Lane Departure Warning. Now that's the system that warns dozy drivers who are veering out of their lanes on the highway and a speed limit display setup that uh, pictures speed signs as you pass them and then displays them for you on the dash.
There is also a preventative pedestrian protection feature. Now that will warn you if someone is just about to step off the pavement in front of you. Uh, plus there are side collision warning and lane change warning features that work to stop you from pulling out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. At the same time, uh, they add in light steering intervention that will ease you back to where you ought to be on the road should you have veered offline. Um, a give way warning feature that will alert you in situations where the right of way needs to be yielded based on roadway signage. And finally, the driving assistant professional pack also includes an active cruise control. Now that can adapt your speed um, to a planned route with the help of navigation data. Even CEOs are concerned about running costs these days, uh, so it's a major feather in this BMW's cap that this remains the most affordable car of its kind to run, despite residual values that are still just behind those of Mercedes. The key reason for this car's running cost efficiency lies with its relatively lightweight. This achieved thanks to the so-called efficient lightweight technologies that BMW developed during the design of its electric iCar models. Now, like those cars, this one is created using an innovative carbon core construction process with carbon fiber reinforced plastic injection and this along with uh, extensive use of aluminium allowed BMW to reduce this uh, sixth generation seven series models weight by a massive 130 kilos when we first saw it back in 2015. That made volume variants of this car around 125 kilos lighter than comparable versions of its arch rival, the Mercedes S-Class, which is an advantage that BMW still enjoys. And it's a reduction comparable to the weight saving that you'd probably make if you asked two adult passengers to get out and walk. It's all quite impressive, as are the stats. Uh, take the 265 horsepower diesel 730D variant that most 7 Series customers tend to choose. Uh, this manages 44.1 mpg on the WLTP combined cycle. And that's a figure only fractionally worse than you get from a 1.2 litre Fiat 500 and 138 grams per kilometre of NEDC rated CO2. Now we tested a version of the little Ford KA Plus city car not long ago that wasn't much cleaner than that. Now it is true that a rival Mercedes S350D equals the 730D's fuel figure and a rival Audi A8 50 TDI actually slightly betters it, but neither rival can get anywhere close to this BMW's emissions showing, which is of course the stat that your taxation exposure will be based on. Uh, for business buyers, that'll be what really matters. Uh, Mercedes S350D is 20 grams per kilometre down on this BMW showing there, and that is a very significant difference. The 730D's figures fall only fractionally if you choose the weightier long wheelbase body style, but opting for the X-Drive four-wheel drive system inevitably has more of an effect. Uh, such a variant returns 42.2 mpg and 143 grams per kilometer of CO2. With the Pokia 320 HP 740D diesel, uh, you have to have X-Drive, and here the figures are 41.5 mpg and 139 grams per kilometer. That does still make this variant a much more tax efficient proposition than a directly comparable two wheel drive Mercedes S400D, which has an NEDC rated emissions figure rated up at 158 grams per kilometre. What about petrol power? Well, it's certainly true that you'll need deep pockets to run the top V8 and V12 versions of this car. Uh, the 750i X-Drive V8 variant manages just 26.4 mpg and 217 grams per kilometre, while the Leviathan M760 IL with its enormous 6.6 litre V12 manages only 21.6 mpg and 285 grams per kilometre. But those derivatives will be bought by chairman of the board who won't have to answer to their finance directors for trifling running cost issues when it comes to their choice of car. Back in the real world, the entry-level petrol 7 Series model, the 600 740i we're trying here, manages 34 miles per gallon and 161 grams per kilometre, which means that this conventional engine version is still cleaner and more frugal than a comparable Mercedes S450 enhanced with a mild hybrid EQ boost electrification. It just shows you that lighter weight will trump expensive technology every time. 
But what if you could have both? Well, in this case, the 740i's 3-litre petrol 6 mated with a 113 HP electric motor powered by a 12 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery secreted under the rear seat. That's the recipe promised by the 745e plug-in hybrid version of this 7, which is the first BMW plug-in model to use an engine larger than four cylinders. As with the outgoing 740e variant, there are three main driving modes, Sport, which is sees the engine and the electric motor combining for maximum performance. Electric, uh, which powers the car using the electric motor alone while the battery charge lasts. And there's hybrid too, which uses a combination approach, which depends on your driving needs. That last hybrid setting is the one that a 745e driver would use most of the time, particularly now that it's assisted by what BMW calls intelligent energy management. Now this delivers more precisely controlled interaction between the engine and the electric motor, and it includes a special function that works with GPS navigation data to assign electric power more efficiently on a pre-planned route. So for example, if you've keyed into the navigation a long journey that ends in a city, then the car will function in hybrid mode on the highway and then automatically switch into electric when you reach the city limits. Plus, there is a special adaptive recuperation feature which uses SatNav data too, uh, this time in combination with this BMW's forward sensors to determine whether a lift on the throttle should result in the car coasting or in the application of regenerative braking. It's all very clever. But is it all super efficient? Well, pretty much yes. As with all plug-in hybrids, the quoted WLTP combined cycle figure is wildly overstated. After all, once you've used up your all-electric driving range, uh, WLTP quoted on a 745e uh, between 32 and 36 miles, depending on variant, this is nothing more than a heavy petrol-powered car with two engines. But the figure, up to 141 miles per gallon on the WLTP cycle for the standard wheel base rear driven model is undeniably eye catching as is that version's 48 grams per kilometer any dc rated co2 showing for the long wheelbase four wheel drive 745e x drive variant uh, the co2 stat does fall to 52 grams per kilometer but that's still five grams per kilometer better than the rival mercedes plug-in offering uh, the rear driven s560 el despite all the electronic assistance uh, a 745e model's ultimate frugality will of course depend to a great extent on how you drive it. If, for example, you regularly approach the potential battery-powered top speed, 68 mph in hybrid and up to 87 miles an hour in the electric setting, then your battery range will inevitably be dropped like a stone and frequent recharging will be necessary. And that's a process that takes about four and a half hours from a conventional level two spec uh, garage wall box charger. Enough with all the hybrid info, you've got the idea. With all versions of this 7 Series, running cost efficiency is a strong point uh, by the modest standards that you can expect from a two-ton large luxury sedan anyway. And it's aided across the range by things like on-demand use of ancillary units, electric power steering, low rolling resistance tires, and brake energy regeneration. As you expect, there is an engine auto start-stop system, and at highway speeds, uh, the cruise control can seamlessly decouple the engine from the transmission to reduce friction and to consequently save fuel. Of course, again, we need to reiterate that the driver will also need to do his or her part. Uh, the fuel and the CO2 figures that we quoted earlier for the, uh, the conventionally engine models uh, all assume that the car is being run in the driving experience control system's most frugal Eco Pro mode. Now in this setting, the air conditioning and the power steering uh, only work when required to save energy and what's called a proactive driving assistant. Now that's also activated. Now this links in with this BMW's professional navigation system and it enables the car to detect braking situations in advance, uh, such as when you're entering a built-up area, uh, when you're going into a speed limit zone or a corner or a filter lane, and it prepares the drive systems accordingly. 
You'll want to keep an eye on how frugal your recent mileage has been. Uh, Journey data, part of the Centre Dash infotainment screen's driving info section. Now that will show a useful fuel graph to brief you on that. Uh, the same section also has an energy flow graphic that shows you at any time what's being powered by what. And there's also a driving style analysis screen that rates your driving with marks out of five for anticipation and acceleration and then works out the extra mileage range that any more frugal driving has gained you. Optimized aerodynamics, uh, they obviously make a significant difference to economy too. Uh, BMW has developed what it calls air breathers and air curtains. Uh, these devices are respectively located behind and ahead of the front wheel arches. Now their purpose is to reduce turbulence and therefore drag in the area around the front wheels. In addition, every 7 Series model has an active Airstream kidney grille at its front end with slats that stay closed when initially you first move off, so helping the engine to warm up to operating temperature as quickly as possible. Once that's been achieved, the slats then open to aid cooling, but they're able to close again at higher speeds to improve the car's slippery shape. Routine maintenance, uh, that's dictated by condition-based servicing. Now that monitors oil level and engine wear, and it takes into account how long it's been and how far the car has traveled since its previous garage visit. Now you can check all of this using menus in the iDrive center dash display. Uh, the center dash screen's car section, that will tell you engine oil level, service requirements, and on a diesel model, you'll add blue level. Plus the car will give you four weeks notice of of when a checkup's needed, so you'll have plenty of time to book that. A teleservices feature comes as part of the BMW Connected Drive services that you can access through the iDrive infotainment system. Via this, before each service appointment's due, your 7 Series will automatically put in a teleservices call to your nominated BMW service centre, and that'll be complete with detailed information on vehicle condition. You will then get a call to arrange a service appointment, and that's something that you'll already have budgeted for if, at the point of original purchase, you opted for one of the two fixed cost uh, service inclusive or service inclusive plus packages, which cover you for five years or 50,000 miles. With these, after a one off payment, and that can be as little as around 400 pounds, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on your car has been paid for during this period, and that includes items such as oil, spark plugs and filters. What else might you need to know? Um, well, you're obviously looking at a full luxury car level of vehicle excise duty, £450 a year for the first five years of ownership. Um, we'll also tell you that BMW's warranty only lasts for three years, but it does include an emergency breakdown service, and at least it isn't mileage limited. There's a three-year paintwork warranty and the usual 12-year anti-corrosion warranty. As for insurance groupings, uh, well, they are high across the range. Uh, this 740i is rated at either Group 48 or 49. For the 730d, it's Group 49 or 50. All other 7 Series variants are rated at Group 50. Uh, the other big ownership cost with a luxury contender of this kind lies with depreciation, and that's something that can often be easily forgotten about in all the excitement of ordering a new car. Independent experts reckon that a typical 740i M Sport variant like this one uh, will be worth 32% of its original value after three years and 60,000 miles. That is reasonably class competitive, but it's way off what you could expect from a comparably priced luxury SUV. Over 1.8 million 7 Series saloons have been sold since production first began back in 1977, but the significance of this model line goes far beyond mere sales figures. Most of the technology that buyers of affordable BMWs enjoy today first appeared on a 7, and since the turn of the century, uh, this design has provided the engines, the drive lines, and the body framing for modern era Rolls Royces. In short, it's a crucial car for BMW. But would you walk past a Mercedes S-Class or an Audi A8 to buy one? 
Well, that's a good question. We're certainly disappointed that BMW hasn't taken the opportunity to add in the autonomous driving features that both those key competitors do offer. And we're surprised that you have to pay extra for a basic standard of camera-driven safety provision. But those caveats apart, there's little doubt that a 7 Series is now a more appealing proposition now that the uh, Munich maker has properly differentiated this contender from its humbler executive models and it's given it a more distinct visual personality too. Not everyone likes the more imposing front end but no one can ignore it and it's got people talking about this car again instead of just wondering why BMW still makes it. Just as importantly though the interior now says luxury in a more uniquely traditional sense and as a result inside one of these you now feel that you're in a much more opulent boardroom level conveyance. All of this is important because the original version of this G11, G12 series, 6th generation 7 series model, was already a pretty complete product, just not a very memorable one. With these changes, plus the uprated engines and the new generation live cockpit professional operating systems, we'd say that it edges ahead of what's on offer from Mercedes and Audi in this segment, at least for the time being. But with a new generation S-Class on the horizon and the A8 moving ever closer to fully automated drive technology, things could change in that regard very quickly. What we can say with certainty is that the Lifecycle Impulse package of updates have successfully rejuvenated this car's proposition in the sector. And they've built on this Mark VI model's existing attributes, namely that it's cleaner than its competitors and it's more confidence-inspiring to drive. Confidence, in fact, is something that this BMW is now not short of. Buyers wanted a statement saloon that was more than just a supersized 5 Series, and that's exactly what BMW's delivered. We think your typical Asian or American plastic surgeon or company director will love it. And there's just a chance that you might too.